The logo design theme for this semester is science and technology. Uh, the idea of mashing them up. And I think a nice way to conceptualize that possibly is wonders large and small. This little animation example from some of the professional examples I put together on this, this mood board that you can look at, but there's plenty out there, takes the small instrument of a microscope and then uses the, you know, the very large thing of a rocket, kind of mashes them up together, which I thought was clever. But we just want sketches, loose, rough sketches for the second proving ground that show these three different approaches. So I just did it on the back of an index card. And how do I get those into the computer so that so class members can look at them and give input? I'm just going to use the FaceTime app, activate the camera. I'm going to hold it up. I'm going to hit Command Shift 4 to get a targeted screen grab. Draw my box around it. let go. It will go right to my screenshots on my desktop. I'm going to open that up just by double clicking on a Mac in preview. Previews like a really basic version of Photoshop but it has some really nice tools. If you're on a Mac you just go to tools and I can flip it horizontally because your camera from your computer is always going to give you a mirror image. Then I can go to tools and adjust color just to make sure that it's pretty visible because you're going to have your classmates looking at them and trying to, to decide which of these approaches of your sketches do they think has the most potential. And I can do auto levels and I can play with the sliders just like we do for levels within Photoshop. Try to make it a little bit more clear. I particularly like the sharpness option just on sketches so that everything's pretty clear, right? And I, I went ahead and I labeled my sketches. So this was my central symmetrical approach. I was trying to do kind of a solar system diagram and like kind of targeted uh, microscopes all in one. Here I just do the, the microscope with kind of the the fist holding it kind of like a, a, a mashup of, of the power fist or of, of revolutionary images. And I try to make it dynamic, even though a microscope isn't the most dynamic thing, I'm trying to really play up the diagonals, avoiding horizontals and verticals. And then for positive and negative space, I did cell structure with the human body, though this is probably a little too biological but this is what I came up with. So I sketch these out quickly. I can then post them like so. And then once you have your three things submitted, that's the first part of the proving ground assignment. So you can get half credit for it as long as you got those three qualifying thumbnails. The second part is once more students have posted, you're gonna use the reply box underneath and you're going to comment on their submissions, right? And I want you to identify, this is a peer critique, which approach you think is strongest and what improvements you think could be made to it before it's a finished logo. So the most obvious thing to keep in mind is that logos are shape-based, not line-based. So if I just drew these as they were and just made them solid black, they wouldn't work very well when really small. They wouldn't be very versatile because they wouldn't have that solid black weight to them. So you want to think about how your classmates' sketches will translate into solid black shapes. And what I do is I'll take my sketches and I'll open them up in Photoshop, a raster program, even though this is a vector project. And I've created a folder for it. There they are. Let me open up my folder. This is assignment four. And let me open it up in Photoshop. So this is a simple way you can play with one of your sketches. Maybe it's the one that you think you'll, you'll refine and make a more refined sketch. And even if it's really low resolution like this, 
I just put a layer on top of it. I just moved it to the side. And then I just used my, my paintbrush at solid black. And I just scribble in on a new layer how I would interpret these outlines as solid black shapes. Realizing at any time I could leave gaps, right? And little subtleties change from changing it to a rect from a rectangle to a wedge. That makes a difference. And if I want the idea of outlines, sometimes that's in the negative space I leave between black shapes. So why do all that? Well, because a logo needs to work needs to be clear but also needs to be versatile so when it's down to this size i can't really tell what it is but i can tell it what it is a lot better than just the outlines but when it gets to about this size oh then i can start to identify it but i might not be quite sure it looks like a microscope and it looks like maybe even someone's hugging a microscope right i get closer and then you start to see more complexity and this is about as many shapes as I would ever include in a logo. This is actually a pretty fussy one. So if you can simplify beyond even this, more power to you. Now I did make little decisions, like I left a little cutout there of white to make that black feel reflective and on the slide as well. But notice how each line in the sketch becomes its own cutout shape. Because when I bring this into Illustrator, I'm going to have to decide, do they taper? Do they cut off? Do they have sharp edges, rounded edges? All of that. And it will just get cleaner and cleaner. And that's our step before next class. Once you get input, knowing what sketch you're going to refine and what shapes are going to be black, you know, and how thick the outlines are, whether you want to sketch it by hand or digitally like I've shown, your refined sketch is going to be the first step for the actual assignment. So then we get to the assignment where we create our finished black vector based on our refined sketch, and then we'll do a color variation. This is a good past student example. Here's their refined sketch. This was the vector that came from it. It got simpler and simpler with each step, right, which often happens. And then this was the color version of that vector. That was for a mashup called Angry Elementals. But it relates to science. So I'm going to go ahead and post my refined sketch. This will be once, once you've posted yours and got your input, and then know how you're going to start proceeding and how you clean that up to, to work for black shapes. So let me post that. Always good to put your name. And now I'm really excited because I get to show you Illustrator, right? And how we can take a raster image that we've that's pixel based and how we can bring it into a vector program. So I'm going to take that refined sketch. This one right here. So that's the refined sketch with this the sketch part taken away, right? I just sketched on top of my my pencil lines. And then you can just turn that layer off and I get this. Which is kind of a fun like handmade logo, but it doesn't have the the sharpness and the clarity that we want as a finished vector. And it looks kind of curved here and wonky. That's to be expected. Illustrator is going to help straighten all that up. So once it's gone through this kind of thinking, I want you to post a, a sketch that makes it pretty clear what shapes you want to have darkened as black shapes. And if it helps, we can think of this as a black shape logo. It's not black and white, it's black shapes. Anything that's white here 
on a red background would show up red, but the logo would still be readable. And then we'll do a color variation where we could put white into it and other colors and other or other uh, values and color variations. So I'm going to just put that as a refined sketch. Now I'm going to open that sketch up in Illustrator. So it's a PNG right now because it's based on my screen grab. It's low resolution. If I open this up in preview and I go to tools and look at the size, I could do this in Photoshop too. It's two inches by one inches at 350. So what is that at screen resolution? 72, it'd be nine by eight inches at screen resolution. So it's basically only made to look good on a computer screen. But when I open that in a new program, I'm gonna say open with Illustrator or I could drag it to the Illustrator icon that's in your doc, the AI. It's gonna come in as a raster image, as a pixel based image. So this is kind of confusing. Sometimes students will save an EPS or an AI file, which are vector file formats, but they're saved with just a raster file in them. <laughs> and that's because vectors can support raster, but you don't want them to. Because the whole benefit of a vector file, like this one that I'm working on for the mural, is you build it on top of your sketch, but then you get rid of that raster sketch so that you're only left with the clean vector shapes. So this is my overall mural template as a vector so far. And why I'm showing this is this is what your logos are gonna to contribute to. They're gonna be filling in the texture, creating patterns, layered at different sizes, maybe different transparencies, really giving this image a lot of personality. Now to make it into something you're familiar with, this is the sketch that I brought into Illustrator. And it is raster based. So if I zoom in, you can see the pixels. It gets very blurry. But each time I use one of these tools to make a vector shape, because that's what Illustrator does, it creates kind of nested within the layer here, it creates a path. So let's just look at this path, for instance. So this path has different properties. Let me close Photoshop, because that's confusing to have in the background. This one single path, which I have the layer to right here, is made up of a stroke that is a black stroke around the path that is one point big. I can thicken that. I can make it thinner. It's in point sizes just like typefaces because these are vectors, not pixels. And then it is also filled with black. So I could fill it with something else. I think white would be the obvious one. Let's see. And I could turn off the outline. And now I have a white filled path. You see how it's overlapping? But in general, all this is is just the outlines of a shape. And then I can fill that shape because we're going to start with black lines. That's how I start all my vectors. And then if we want to, we can thicken the shape using the stroke. And then once I am all finished, and I know I have all the weights I want on these different strokes, I think it might be interesting to make this a little bit more than one point. And I can do decimals as well. It's all pretty technical. I can try 1.3. And then I just need to make sure it shows up in the right place. Then I can modify each individual path. There aren't the same transform tools, but you use the large selection tool and it's very similar to a transform tool where you can squeeze, you can rotate, you can play with the scale. But this is what I wanted to show you. Each time you make a new shape. 
it's safe.